So I'm going to show this to y'all. I don't know how well I can do it. I don't know how well I can explain it. Um, little disclaimer, I do zero of our bookkeeping. So none of this might even be based on facts. This is just how I would do it if I was in charge of the books. Okay. Now, I wish I would have took a little bit more time to prep um, and pulled an appraisal, but I really couldn't show you all the appraisal. At least I could go off of it because there's a bunch of a bunch of this. Um, the very first person ever asked me for an NOI was Daniel Chad Moore, and I didn't know what it was. And since I didn't know what it was, I didn't know I didn't know how to answer him because I didn't want him to think I didn't know what it was. And then I was like, well, okay. But the answer to that, anytime anybody asks you and you don't know, let me let me figure that out. I don't know yet. Let me figure it out. Turns out the NOI on that property was zero because it was a tax foreclosure. It was completely vacant. Um, so it was an easy answer. But that's whenever I really started diving into it because – and the only reason I knew to reach out to Daniel Moore was because Aaron Silk had wholesold him a commercial building and made a $300,000 assignment fee. And so Daniel was the only person I knew that was operating in that space. So when I seen that we had a convenience store – with a couple little shops on the end of the lease um, on the tax sale, I was like, oh man, maybe this guy will want it. It's pretty cheap too. Need to follow up, figure out what happened with that deal. But I'm going to give you my best representation of what NOI is. Again, I don't do our bookkeeping. So NOI does not include, okay, I'll do a little minus sign here, does not include CapEx. Income tax, this isn't property tax, this is income tax, or debt service. Now, this last one really confuses me because I never, I, I don't see anybody include debt service in their NOI figures, but every single time, every single time I get a tired landlord's books, the debt service is included on there and there's some funky ass math that the program does to it separates the interest from the principal pay down but i don't understand what's happening with the principal pay down whenever i look at a pnl i'm like okay i just gotta take these numbers i take the gross rents and then i start working backwards because the debt servicing throws the the pnl all sorts of fucked up okay so after I thought about that, like I was like, man, this is, if you ask a motivated seller of a commercial property, hold on, let me put not include over here. Not included. I probably can't read that anyways. But anyways, the, every time now that I look at a PL, it's like, okay, if I ask, if I ask for a PL and they get, and they're showing a number for NOI, and they're taking the mortgage interest out of it. That's a bonus for me. Why is that a bonus for me? Why do you why do y'all think it's a, it's a bonus? It's a bonus because it's an expense. So in commercial real estate or in, in multifamily uh, storage units, anything like that, every dollar earned slash saved equals ten dollars in value that's based on a 10 cap on a five cap it'll be twenty dollars on a 20 cap it'll be five dollars there we go easy math but you could just figure everything in the world will sell at a 10 cap i know there's a glare there but every dollar earned or saved is ten dollars in value so if they are deducting the interest if they're taking that as an expense against it and they're taking that out of their noi they are giving me a huge amount of equity typically because let's say they're 10 years in on a, on a 30 year mortgage or a 20 year mortgage. They're still paying a huge amount of interest every year. So if they pay $10,000 in interest that year, which is probably really fucking low, that that's a hundred thousand dollars in value. That's a hundred thousand dollars in equity. Their bookkeeping mistake. Okay. Means to me on my offer. Hope that makes sense. Don't know if it does. Do some fucking Googling after this, whatever. To that asshole that's talking about me cussing in front of my kid, I'm only cussing in front of her fucking mic today. So this is the next thing we're going to dive into is CapEx. CapEx, CapEx is any, the way you can file CapEx or the way you can think about CapEx is 
you could put anything you want under CapEx, okay? And then you'll get convicted of like mortgage fraud or um, I don't know, I don't know. Like like anytime you're jimmying your books like that, you don't want to. But the CapEx, I, I really don't even know the definition other than the way I think about it is this. I, I simplified it for myself. If it's a one-time expense, if I'm only going to have to do that that year, I'm not going to have to do it every year thereafter or I'm not going to have to do it every month thereafter. That's a CapEx expenditure. So let me give you an example. There's a roof. Is that CapEx? Uh, Y'all think a roof is CapEx? No, yes. Another way, another way I've heard this talked about is um, if it adds value to the property. So is a roof cap a CapEx expenditure? My, my vote is always yes, okay? It doesn't matter if, if Hurricane Katrina comes in and blows my damn roof off. It's still a CapEx expenditure. And in that case, I'm going to collect a little bit of insurance money, not a full amount of insurance money, but I'm going to collect a little bit anyways. Is a roof CapEx expenditure? I would say yes. Is mowing, tree trimming, Any of that stuff, I would say no. Now, landscaping is something that I guess could be a gray area. You go out there and you put in some fucking trees and some shit and fancy that motherfucker up. That's probably a CapEx expenditure because you're only going to do that once. You're only going to buy the rocks once. You're only going to do the sod. I mean, you might do it every year. You might do it every five years. You know, it's a little bit gray area. You need to ask a CPA or some sort of professional about that. But the way that I break it down simply for me is if I replace a hot water heater, if I'm replacing a hot water heater, that is a, a, a CapEx expenditure. If I'm doing a make ready, if I'm going in and I'm cleaning and I'm, and I'm painting and I'm making little repairs, then that's not a CapEx expenditure. That is repair maintenance. Um, it's however you want to do it, but roofs, hot water heaters, air conditioners, um, all of that stuff that adds value that you're not going to have to replace every year, you're going to do it, but it's multifamily. So if right now we're doing 32 units in, in Coleman, if I'm doing 32 units in Coleman and as soon as we fire this bitch up, like all of a sudden five hot water heaters go out in the first year of operation, I can assume that the next year I'm going to have to do five as well. What this means for you, whenever you're asking for NOI, when you're trying to figure out NOI and you're looking at your seller's P and L, we'll put this up here just randomly. Okay. Profit and loss. You want to get this CapEx, you want to look, if it's in QuickBooks or whatever, you can get a breakdown of it. You can see they paid Jose. You can see that he put in a uh, roof. You can see that they bought a hot water heater. You can see it, those receipts. You can see the whole deal. So if, if I'm looking at their books and I'm evaluating this property, whenever I'm diving into it and I'm sitting here and I'm reading on my spare time, I'm looking at this CapEx expenditure and I'm diving into what it was because if they went in and replaced all the roofs, good. That means I've got 30 years or 20 years until I'll, you know, run out of the lifetime of that roof and unless it's metal, then it's 50 years. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. If they only replace one roof and there's four roofs on the, on the complex, I know I got three more coming. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm not running off and leaving people. Um, I don't know if y'all got some fucking questions or whatever. I got some no, some yes. So, Monthly service of landscaping is an expense. Yeah, mowing, um, trash pickup, stuff like that is always going to be an expense. But I would I would venture to say that if you go out there and plant 47 trees, that's going to be CapEx. Um, so now we get into debt or, or, or income tax. Income tax, it's just like the only reason I put that on there is because one day I was talking about CapEx and some asshole was like, what about income tax? And I was like, whatever. That's not property tax. That's income tax. So. On an appraisal, on an appraisal, the way that it works is, let's say you got twenty thousand dollars a month in gross. Okay, every appraisal I've seen, if you're buying the water, um, if you're not in the water, whatever, they have what's called vacancy and loss. We're going into some stuff that really ain't got shit to do with uh, with capex. That L looks really shitty. Clean that L up for you. Vacancy and loss, rent. That means uh, 
you know, you're trying to work with Susan. You're, you're wanting her to, to catch up, so you let her live there. You don't file the eviction. She lives there a month for free, so you lose that 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 month. It's basically considered a vacancy, but it's not a vacancy. It's called lost rent. I mean, you'll end up with a judgment against it, but I don't think that I don't know how you put a judgment on your books. I don't know if it ends up coming in as an asset or not. But you, you're they're going to figure that in. Normally, it's ten percent. Um, this is just numbers off the top of my head. So, out of twenty thousand dollars a month. 2000 is already going to vacancy and loss, okay? Then you got a management fee. By the time it's all said and done, you're going to have, you got management. You know, 6% is normally what they figure. They do put a CapEx on their appraisal. It's normally around 3%. They have all these deals. Now, This these are... For us, at least, it, you know, it doesn't matter if your vacancy is, if your turnover is almost non-existent. Whenever, when they, the appraisals, appraisers, figure up your NOI for you, okay? They take your actual expenses, and they do, it's called a trailing 36. So they take your actual expenses. We've never had 36 uh, months worth of records, but they take them and they do kind of a pro forma, and they average it out, and they see what it is. And then they put their, their, they go out to the other properties that they've appraised in the area and they pull those numbers and they say, oh, okay. So maybe these numbers can change. Austin James Ingram would be somebody great to ask. The management number, I hate seeing the management on ours because we self-manage. But this isn't for when we own the property. This is for when the bank takes the property back. They want to know what their expenses are going to be. That's how they underwrite it and know what they're going to loan. So 10% bank seeing loss, 6% management. 3% for CapEx. Um, we're all, only 20% into this. There's another 20% in expenses. Um, repair and maintenance gets a gets a little slack. You know, all of those things come in. What you end up with is you end up with about 40% in expenses taken out. So it would be 20,000. You're only left, you only get credit for 60% of it. So you would do times. 0.6 and and then you would obviously take whatever that number is we'll just make it make this 10,000 actually I could do it because I'm a genius 12,000 is what you're left with and then times 12 because there's 12 months in a year equals $144,000 NOI based off of this evaluation that's 1.4 million Now, whole bunch of scribbling. I'm not fucking Vanna Watt. Um, essentially, I just underwrote the deal for you. But what I want, what I wanted to get out of this is, if somebody asks you for NOI, okay, you can get the exact numbers. You want to go through them because you want to know what you're up against here. You want to know what's in the capex. Um, you want to see if there's some leverage in the debt servicing. You want to see if they've been keeping, uh, if the NOI they gave you isn't accurate because they've got some interest deductions in there um, that don't belong. You want to see where that leverage is. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what you to do quick figures, you just need to know that 40% for expenses is pretty standard. You know, with us, we've got some that, that we've only got 30% for expenses. Um, we've got some that have even less than that. That Oh, yeah, property tax. Property tax is one. insurance I can't forget any of this anyways so but all that's going to equal about 40% wherever it went right here 40% that's the math that's the long form um, if you want to get a quick NOI but if you're looking into it you're diving deep into it you want to know what's going on in CapEx you want to know if they accidentally put some mortgage interest um, on that you know if, if, if they took mortgage interest off of this you know, and there's another 40,000 and they're only showing that this place made a hundred thousand, you know, that's a $400,000 price swing in your favor. So I just want to show you that. Um, hope you got something out of it. I'm drinking my coffee. Ooh, roughneck real estate swag. Anyways, I'm drinking my coffee. Um, about to go back home. It's raining. I might end up back up here doing some marketing videos later. I'm going to go try to destroy some trees with my track hoe while I wait for Emory. So I'll see y'all a little bit later.
and see if I got any questions before I go. Are there things that I look for to formulate the offer? Yeah, deferred maintenance. Um, deferred maintenance. It's the same. Like if if I think it's going to take four hundred thousand, if I know that this is worth uh, one point four million based off the income that it's producing, basically what I do is I, I mess with the cap rate because like if that's at a ten cap, I tell them, look, I'm going to have to buy this at a sixteen or seventeen cap, which I'll kind of show you how to do that. My phone right here. Um, I'm gonna have to buy this at a 16 or 17 cap because you haven't replaced the roof since fucking Jesus was a baby and Moses walked the earth. So I'm gonna have to replace all these roofs. I'm gonna have to do that. And I'll show you how that'll swing the price because, you know, basically that's you can you can argue with it that this is a a 20 cap property because of the deferred maintenance and you can capture a lot of equity that way. So if I have a property that's making 144 thousand a year, just like the one we're referencing here, and I and I want to buy it at a 16 cap. I'm going to divide it by 0 0.16. So that's 16%. Okay. Which is what a cap rate is. Now it's a $900,000 property versus a $1.4 million property. But the sweet spot of that is um, on the appraisal that the bank will give you, typically they don't come in and say, oh, well, you know, do they look at deferred maintenance? They do, but they don't. Like it's, it's, based off of comparable sales in the area that have sold on MLS or that they know have sold. So if everything there is sold at a minimum of a nine cap, you know, the bank will still give you this evaluation of a hundred of 1.4 million, but you bought it for 900,000. Um, we'll divide it by, yeah, you see divide by 0.8, which means all you need is a one point, uh, one million dollar appraisal to, um, get it onto a bank loan, basically to burr into a small unit like that. The reason people ask all the time, well, we're not doing bigger deals. Um, we, we just found a soft spot in the market. Um, really like it. And can I explain why the interest doesn't count? I cannot, I don't know. It's the rules I read on the internet. Um, basically everything is based off of, uh, it's just like cap rate. Cap rate doesn't include debt servicing. Why cap rate doesn't include debt service, and I don't know. I guess everybody in the world should be a cash buyer, so they're based off cash buyer. Now, there's something else called debt service coverage ratio. I'll do a video on it one day and kind of break it down because that's another way that the bank insulates itself from loaning too much money on a property. Everybody in the world, the rents should go up. And if you're properly maintaining them, if you're taking out of this 144, if you're if you're spending you know, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars a year on CapEx if you're putting new roofs on, if you're putting new paint on, if you're laying new pavement as you get money, you shouldn't end up like the tired landlords that we buy from. You know what I mean? You should, if, if you're investing the money back into the property, the, a proper amount of money back into the property, then, you, you know, let's say you put $20,000 a year back into the property, then you shouldn't end up in the deal. Now, when you put debt servicing onto this property, we'll just, we'll just, We'll run this at an 80% loan because I want to show y'all the importance of this. We're way off subject now, but I want to show y'all what, um, so I just, uh, anyways, there's the, there's the amount of the property times 0.8. Cause that's what a bank would loan you if is up to 80%. So they'll loan you $1.1 $1 million against this property. All right. So we'll go into my mortgage app. And we'll look at the debt that I have access to because this is very important. Very, very, very important. So if I buy 1.1 million, 555, I think they, yep, they got it right there. Um, at the at the rate we have access to, if you look at that, where am we at? Where are we at? Can y'all see that? Come on, phone. Anyways, it's an $8,278 a month payment. Yep, there it is, $8,278 payment. So if I take that $8,200, remember, we're only making $144, okay? So if I take that $8,278, okay, there it is, multiply it times 12 because I got to make 12 payments, 99000 of that $144 is going to debt servicing. Now, the hidden gem in this is, on this loan, and I'll show you, you're gaining, come on, focus, focus, 
focus. Well, y'all can't see it, but if this camera would focus, there it is. You're gaining $2,500 a month in principal. That's like $2,500 a month going into a savings account, but you only have $45,000 a year off of this one property. So you risked $1 million in, in debt to make $40,000 a year. That's why you want to be under leveraged. That's why you think about it like this. This one complex, this mystery complex that we're doing right here, this mystery complex will pay for one, one back office employee. Okay. How many deals, how many um, properties can you manage with one back office employee? You know what I mean? How many, how, how many receipts can that person put in? How that's why people ask me all the time. Why do you, you know, why don't you make more money? It's because we're hiring people. We're wanting to step away from this and it just kind of rolled. Now, in this is our management fee and we're self-managed. So, I mean, there's a little bit more, there's a little bit more gravy. So let's say there's, you know, 6% of whatever the gross is, uh, 200, whatever. You know, maybe there's an extra 15, $16,000 on top of this, but still that's $60,000 a year. You're making off of $1 million worth of debt. That swings greatly whenever you get, when you're only leveraged 700 uh, thousand against the same property when you're only leveraged seven hundred thousand against this exact same property. Um, you're making an extra three thousand a month. It's a extra what thirty thousand dollars a year. That's huge. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's huge. So that's some some knowledge bombs here in the morning.